Uh, what'd, you, what'd you bring? What'd you bring for us? Anthony Henday. Henday? That's the African me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's not African. Oh. He's uh, one of the first Europeans to explore the interior of Western Canada. Hell yeah. So uh-huh. this is 1750. This is your type of this guy. This is great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's he, 1750. He was originally a smuggler. And, you know, he gets caught eventually. He um he starts working for the Hudson Bay Company. Ah. Right? And up in the north. Yeah. They're like, he's bold and enterprising. He mostly That was so bold. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I love saying that. He's so bold. <laughs> do you want to do it? Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> so <laughs> you're proud of this. It's <laughs> funny. <laughs> So when I was working as a waiter at Friday's, <laughs> I was waiting on a table and there was an Irish girl and she was there with like two Swedes. Uh, an Euro- Irish one woman with two Swedes? Yeah. yeah very weird. Very yeah. weird. Or no, sorry. One Swede, one Australian and a Finn. What? It the sounds f- like a joke. Why is the EU at this table? <laughs> <laughs> Australia's like, we've been admitted to the EU. <laughs> On yeah. Staten Island. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they were all all pairs. Right. Yes. They're yeah. nannies. Yeah. I. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so I was like, hey, I think this Irish chick's pretty cute. Mm-hmm. So I was like, hey, Irish girl, you're cute. I wrote on a note. Who wrote on a note? You did not write on a note. <laughs> oh, no, that's right. Because my handwriting is so write bad. The note. <laughs> I forgot I had you write the note. Because my handwriting. You didn't was... want to think that she was talking to a serial killer. <laughs> that's right. I forgot I had you write the note. Oh, wow. It was a great move on your part. It worked. Well, everything worked. It yeah. worked. Yeah. Well, I knew my handwriting is like if I answer this guy, I'm going to end up in the back of a vet. <laughs> So I had Steve write it. You're right. I forgot that. So Steve wrote the note for me. And then I slipped it. She gave her note back. and Put it on the table. Put it on the table. She left her number. And we started dating. Yeah. And eventually she was like, I thought that was so bold. (laughs) How you left your number. Where is she today? She's in Ireland. Ireland, yeah. Green card expired, yeah. No. She's like a burlesque dancer in Ireland or something. Oh, wow. Yeah. I guess go. we have that in common. <laughs> <laughs> Mine do it after they, yeah. <laughs> they, they're they done with me. <laughs> All right. So what I'm about so bold. this? Uh, <laughs> that was so bold. What about this explorer? <laughs> Tell me about this explorer. So um, he was up in Hudson Bay. And the region was known as Rupert's Land. Yes. You knew that? That's yeah. funny. Yeah. Still called that today. Is it's it good. really still called Rupert's Land? Mm-hmm. What area is that exactly? It's like uh it's like the, the Prince Wales Island. No, it's out it's out west. Oh, it's west. Yeah. Okay. You gotta visit there. Rupert's Land? Yeah. The land of Rupert's. Everyone's just like me. It's all <laughs> fucking <laughs> you all have all look the grave same. plots in Long Island. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so eventually he's traveling, right? Um, just going as far west as he can, going down. Oh, it's the, it's the area around the Hudson Bay. Okay. So the Hudson Bay is that giant, you know, U-shaped so fucking thing at they, the top of the earth. Okay. <laughs> so he's at the ends of the earth, this guy, basically. He's very far north. Yeah. Um. The Arctic. So he... He eventually gets approval where they're going to let him go inward. And he gets um, some Indian companions mm. to go with some him. Inuit? Mm. Uh, they're called Cree. Oh, the Cree. Okay. Yeah, you know the Cree? Oh, major, major players. Really? Oh, yeah. I've the got... Native Canadians. They're indigenous Canadians, right? Yes. They're... Now, this is the thing. So Native Americans, obviously, you got like the Cheyenne, shit like that. Just a tribe. But uh, the Cree, you wouldn't call them Native Americans, right? They'd be, or would you? Because it's the continent. No, I, th- I think they uh, they stretch into their territory, kind of stretch into both areas. Okay, so you could. I'm not exactly sure where they are, but I, I, you know, I've I heard of the Cree. Say it's Native American, yeah, they're right? Na- they're they're Native. North they call them Native Canadians in Canada. Okay, that's yeah. what I was wondering. Yeah. 
I was wondering if it was more the continent or the country. No, it's the okay. country. So he goes westward um, to Alberta. Uh, he goes to Red Deer, a whole bunch of places, mm-hmm. Calgary. Um, and he is the first European to see the Rocky Mountains. Wow. That's like, impressive. He's yeah. at a distance, but he's the he first. Been, what year is this? 1754. Yep. That's rough. That's okay. a rough time to be there. So oh, there's nothing there. It's, yeah. Uh, he's rolling with the Cree. You know, he has his his, his people. <laughs> rolling with Apollo Creed. <laughs> and eventually, he comes across the Blackfoot mm-hmm. that he's trying to make a deal. He did not know that... Their feet were black. <laughs> yeah. He was shocked. <laughs> they, they, he didn't know. Like, why don't they wash their feet? I don't get it. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> uh, he didn't know that the, the Cree and the Blackfoot enemies. Enemies. He Ooh. didn't know that. Did you know that? No, not of hand. Yeah. The Blackfoot were always sparring with the uh, the Lakota. That was their big enemy. He's one of the first uh, white people that the Blackfoot ever Let's saw. See. Yep. They see him. And they're like, what the fuck? A yeah, ghost, exactly. A spirit. <laughs> they're like, what is this? They say, are you friend or foe? They, they're mm. like, they don't know. Yeah. yeah. He's fucking terrifying. Um, sh- makes landfall at a Blackfoot encampment, living with like 322 teepees, just kind of fucking. Mm. This is probably like Minnesota. He lived amongst them for a little bit. Yeah. Learned with, with the. The enemies? Yeah, it's just like he was kind of, you know, he switched basically. Like, I'm with mm-hmm. Blackfoot now. Oh, okay. Wow. It's, like, it's like the most advantageous thing. Mm-hmm. No. So he's kind of like going between the two of them, and he's like, you guys need to work on stockpiling and like teaching them kind of almost the some Western of- philosophies that will help them survive more. Uh-huh. And he's slowly bringing them some ideas, and he's kind of going between the two people. Um. Eventually, he just explores the whole territory, and he, like, notices that, like, they're starting to drink a lot, the natives. He's bringing them alcohol? Yeah. I'm assuming they ha- they- I guess he's going in and out, because he couldn't just be carrying exactly. all this. Uh, but he wrote in his diary that the First Nations people are having problems with alcohol. Uh-huh. And he's like, huh, that's interesting. That's he's notorious. Like, they drank too much, and basically just kind of discovered- the prairie and yeah very cool yeah just interesting What's his name guy. anthony handy 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 yeah and you know handy brought a lot of trade to a york factory uh-huh and that's kind of this guy when uh you know like lewis and clark would go west for the first time in the name of the united states there were already like european traders out that way you know, it wasn't like they was the first. They were yeah. the first ones out there, and I imagine that this guy probably paved the way for a lot of those guys. He's like, probably the first one. Right. Um, some historians have said there is no feat in all the story of northwestern travel that surpasses this, and that his trip led to further development of the West, for it gave his company a new outlook. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Basically being like, look at all this shit here. There's people, yeah. you know, and like kind of just <laughs> opening everything. Here's up. what we could conquer. Here's what we can't. Yeah. <laughs> At least without fighting. The Hudson Bay Company is like the Canadian version of the East India Company. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it's just not as successful as that was. I mean, that's such a global. Well, empire. that became like another country in itself, like their own private empire. They took over yeah. India. In the name of England. <laughs> yeah. Right. I also think weather is a huge factor in that. What? For this guy? Well, for how powerful. Well, it's the type of stuff that you can yeah. extract from that right. landscape. It's a lot of furs and timber. Right. Like, you know, yeah. whereas in India, there's all kinds they of They also spices. don't know, like, that, like, they don't know that oil is in the ground. You know, mm-hmm. they. Not yet. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's like they don't know how actually mm-hmm. rich the, the land is. Right. Yeah. But for what they're using, um, you know. So Anthony Hende just kind of uh, almost forgot to explore. I've never heard interesting. of him. Interesting. Yeah. Very cool. So, That's because it was Canada. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> fuck Canada. Hey, fuck you, buddy. I think we have a lot of Canadian listeners. We I'm do. sorry, Don't Canada. I love you guys. Canada's great. 